Good morning, everyone. On today's episode of Pinchy House Garage, we're doing some modifications to Ian's Red Mark IV Jetta that we just built for pretty much for a big turbo setup coming soon. But before we go to big turbo, we gotta get this car looking right. And what we gotta do is put some fabulous manufacturing drop plates on the back. So let's get to work. This is Pinchy House Garage. about um, when we're doing this uh, DIY is safety number one is our biggest concern so when we lift the car up make sure you put some wood chucks on the front wheels um, since we are only going to be working on the front of the car we're not going to be working on the I mean uh, the back of the car and not the front so put some wood chucks in the front of the tire that way you have a little so to prevent the car from rolling a little bit forward when you're jacking it up um, obviously Remove your wheels, break loose um, your rear lug nuts. Uh, today's DIY, we're going to have to remove the caliper, uh, the main brake lines, so we can get uh, everything removed, so we can get everything situated for putting on the uh, Fabulous Manufacturing drop plates. And then we'll show you what to do next. All right, so now that we got the car in the air, got it on jack stands, got the wheels off, Next step is take the handbrake off. <laughs> Don't want this on. All right, it's gonna believe me, it's gonna make your life a lot better. Um, once the handbrake is off, you should be able to spin the the hub freely, which is good. The next step is to take your calipers off. After taking the calipers off, uh, actually prior to taking your calipers off, um, you're gonna take the handbrake cable off. Um, this is just going to help make life a little bit easier when you're doing your adjustments. The rotor is going to have to come off, the caliper has to come off. Once that whole assembly is off, we'll be able to get to the hub. Um, the hub has to gonna have to be yanked out and we're going to um, uh, pop on uh, the new hubs as well. But it's not that simple. So I'm just giving you guys a quick breakdown on what has to be done during the process. Um, so first, caliper. Actually, no, first, yeah, caliper, rotor, then hub. Um, break loose all the cables around here because uh, once you put the new drop plates, it's going to shift the, um, the, this, I guess, the, yeah, the location of the wheel. So currently, right now, when, since you're lowered, the wheel sits more forward. Drop plates move the wheel back to the middle, so your cables are going to have to be um, loose so you can move them forward and get them adjusted correctly. So, that is the plan of action, so let's get to work. So we broke loose the uh, caliper uh, bracket here, and they use an 8mm Allen wrench to break loose these guys. Um, the next step where you guys, will, uh, you guys are going to have is to get this uh, brake, uh, handbrake cable off. So, a couple ways to do it. Push down the cables uh, right here, the, the actual bracket right here, this guy is what pulls the tension to tighten the handbrake so what we need to do is make sure it's loose pull all the way down and then pull the um, cable out of its way um, again you don't have to do this I just do it just makes my life a lot easier you're not required um, so if you do not have a socketed uh, Allen 8 millimeter bolt for the the bracket here you can use an Allen wrench but the problem is, the Allen wrench alone is not going to be good enough. So what you're going to need to do is use an old school leverage trick. You're going to use a smaller wrench. I'm using a 14. And you're going to kind of put it towards the end right here. And you're going to use this as leverage. So that it gives you a little more length. And you can break loose 
the uh, bracket, no, not the bracket, but the bolt to your caliper. Um, these are little tricks that, yeah, that will make your life a lot easier during this project uh, because these bolts uh, tend to rust in place and pretty much are nearly impossible to break off with just a little near Allen wrench and not with enough leverage. I mean, this little Allen wrench is long, but it's not enough leverage to break loose a rusted on uh, caliper uh, bracket bolt. So that what works. But we ended up using uh, my ratchet with a eight millimeter socketed uh, Allen, and then broke right off immediately. Um, if you want to, as a preventative measure, measure you can also um, soak them with some WD or PB blaster, which I highly recommend. Instead of WD, PB blaster just penetrates way better. Um, you can do that as well, and that will actually get you um, pretty much done sooner than later. Um, so hopefully those tricks will help you out for the for this project. Um, so next step is to remove the caliper, and then um, I'll pretty much I'll show you what to do. Now, next. finally, the spacer is finally removed. Sucker was rust on on here. We're gonna remove the set screw for the rotor. All right. So this is where it becomes a headache. You guys can see here. See that bolt? See that one? That one? And that one down here? Um, those four hold this thing right here. Uh, this is called a dust shield. Now to remove it, you got a couple ways of doing it. You can go buy a special tool uh, that fits over here. It's kind of like a 90 degree bend wrench that fits in there. Um, it's like a 15 I think, or 16. Okay, that's option number one. Option number two, uh, make sure number one, first removed your um, your ABS sensor, you don't want to damage that. But option number two is to grab a, um, a hub puller or just a puller in general, take the dust cap off and you're going to pull the bearing all the way out or the hub and the bearing out and then you can unbolt everything since we are replacing the hubs and the bearings on this uh, it's not going to matter for us so we're going to actually damage it so if you guys want to do it the other way there's an older video that I created uh, just go on my channel look up IDF drop plates it walks you through on how to actually preserve this bearing without damaging it um, so follow that but we're going to do it with the proper way by putting new bearings and new hubs all in here before, I mean after we get the new drop plates installed. All right. So the next step is to remove the ABS sensor. Should be an Allen wrench right here. It's right here. You can see my finger. All right. So took the dust cap off. You just use a flyhead screwdriver. Um, ABS sensor requires a five millimeter. Okay. So next step is to pull the hub off, which is simple. You need one of the little claw guys. I'll just kind of center it. You can pick these up for like 20, 30 bucks. Make sure it goes on straight by hand. Then get your socket. And just kind of hold it here and guide it along. Because it's going to want to go sideways on you. doesn't help use something else's leverage there you go and you'll hear the bearing start popping out of its socket so 
So now that we took the, um, the dust cap off, you're going to take off the, um, the hub nut or the bearing uh, right here. Not the hub nut. Oh my god. Alright, so now that you've removed the dust cap, the next step is to remove this little uh, nut right here. This is actually what holds the bearing in place. So take this guy off and you need a breaker bar and a socket and you're going to need to use the 1 and 3 16 socket uh, 12 point. If not, you'll never get this sucker off. Once that's removed, now you can use your little claw to pull your hub off with the bearing. Now, you have a 50-50 chance of the, everything coming out together. Uh, more than likely, you're gonna have, it's not going to come off together. Um, I'd say still 50-50, but we'll see. Let's see how our results end up right now. Right now the bearing's coming off with the hub. I'm just gonna yank this guy sucker off. And there it goes. So hub came off with most of the bearing. Um, st the rest of it's stuck on the spindle. So what's next is uh, you gotta yank that sucker out. It's not that hard. Um, so we'll get to that in just a little bit. But this is what matters is taking this sucker off. Once this is off, um, you can use your claw again and see if I'll let you grab the rest of this. Yep, and let us pull everything else out. Super cool. So now you'll see the rest of the uh, bearing is here. Uh, this is actually called the race. Um, you can give it a try and see if your hub puller will yank this out. Um, I've never been successful with it, but I'll give it a try just to see if it works. But I doubt it's going to work for me. Because the race is very weak on this outer portion, so you might not be successful. Um, maybe if you had a multi-point puller. Yeah, see. <laughs> and part of the race came out, <laughs> so you see that. So yeah, we gotta we got to grind this piece down, but we'll do that once we take the spindle off. Um, so these four bolts is what holds this whole entire assembly together. So this piece and the spindle. Um, once the spindle's off, um, it'll be easier for us to go over to the vise and hold it there and grind it off and then put it back and put the new bearing back on top of that. So again, the reason why we're doing it this way because we're putting a brand new hub, a brand new bearing and brand new ABS ring. So I can care less what happens with this. Um, but for you guys are trying to preserve it, uh, there's, again, there's another DIY, um, how to install IDF drop plates on my channel. Um, we're doing fabulous manufacturing, but we're replacing everything um, just to do it right. All right. So now I broke loose my uh, bolts here for the hub. It's four in total, or spindle, I guess you want to call that. You guys can see, oh, there they are. Beautiful, beautiful. Now you gotta remember which direction your uh, dust uh, cover is on because it'll make life a lot easier, believe me. So, things like that. So now that we have this off right here, this is the spindle. This is what your wheel mounts on, just so you guys know. So we got to clean this sucker up, cut this uh, race off, and then we'll be able to um, get this portion ready. So now uh, the next step here is there's a lot of rust buildup on this surface. And when you put a brand new machined part here, um, you have to 
make this flat because this is flat this is machined perfectly flat so what's going to happen is that you put this on here just like so it'll have a wobble you'll see not flat so you gotta get your uh, wire brush and get this all cleaned up probably just throw um, a quick uh, coat of etching primer on it just so it doesn't rust anymore and then that's it but um remember you got to remove all the rust that's on here because if not it's not going to sit flush and it'll cause it'll cause a wobble so get a wire brush and let's get this going okay got a wire brush here just gonna give it really really good feel like it's really rough and what you have to do is grab your plate go back and mount it where it's supposed to go and just if it still has like a, a teeter effect see it's not it's not flush and you gotta keep repeating it over and over and over until it's ready and you'll see right here's a chunk of rust right here so all that has to come off before um, you install your plates. So now that I got the uh, surface all nice and cleaned up, put it back on here, and then wiggle. And you'll notice there's no play anymore. So that means this is ready for install. Now, since I did do a lot of grinding on this metal surface, uh, it would be smart to do a quick coat of paint. Again, all you want to do is prevent as much rust build up on back here just to be safe so just give it a good coat of uh, etching primer is usually what I like to recommend uh, so clean the surface off as best you can an etching primer super quick um, very very light coat don't need anything heavy um, the etching primer will dig into the um, to the metal and just prevent it from rusting uh, quickly on your uh, car so that's it just a quick preventative uh, measure so here. we got a coat of primer on here which got let it dry for a couple minutes uh, once that's going, we're going to work on the uh, driver's side now, doing the exact same procedure. So let's get to work um, while this is drying so we can get this going. But before we get on the other side, I'm going to show you guys what hardware is included so you guys know which one, which hardware goes where. So all the nuts go on the actual uh, studs. The Allen bolt ones, these guys right here, the big Allen head ones, they actually go on the outer portion of the drop plate and these tapered uh, allen ones as well go on the spot that are tapered um, so it's pretty straightforward um, just remember to rem uh, to keep them in that order the plates only go on one way so it's hard to figure out which which plate goes where um, they they just they're they're set in their direction so you can't put them on incorrectly just that's the good part uh, they do provide you a little bottle of red Loctite you will need this for every single nut on here um, so you will have to put a little bit of red Loctite on the threads on every single thread on here because again this is what's holding your wheel on your car so you want to make sure you have proper um, torque specs and everything uh, torque specs on this guy the fabulous is really nice to provide you a DIY sheet 
So obviously we do the wire wheel portion, uh, the Loctite again on every single bolt and nut. Um, the four bolts that these guys right here that they provide you, these are set at 47 foot pounds. And then the nuts that are provided, um, these right here, they're set at 44 foot pounds. And Loctite is not required for these because these are actually locking nuts. So uh, the four uh, bolts right here um, are red Loctite at 47 foot pounds, and the nuts are at 44 foot pounds, no Loctite required. All right, guys. So same procedure on this side, um, caliper comes off, rotor comes off, then the dust cap, you're going to remove the actual um, spindle nut and then pull the bearing arrow out and then we'll be able to pull everything else off. So now that we got the spindle off, bearing off and everything here, so now we did a quick grind down and now we got to do a quick test fitment on the drop plate here. Again. Put it on like you're going to install it and give it a wiggle if it has like feel that hear that it's not flush so we have to keep grinding until this all this is uh pretty much removed if you don't remove all that stuff old rust here it's never gonna sit flush and again it can create an issue while you're driving maybe add a little bit of vibration uh, maybe cause some weird toe issue. Um, there's, it's just bad enough to give you an issue. So make sure you grind all this down, clean it all up, and then give it a coat of primer just so it prevents as much rusting as possible. So next fitment again. And now, no more clickety clack. So we've solved that problem now. Now is actually uh, give it a clean off. And get ready for some primer. All right, so now apply Loctite accordingly. You want to do this on all four bolts that they provide you. Decent amount on there. Now each one of these is set at 47 foot pounds, the nuts are at 44 foot pounds. So set your torque wrench to 47 foot pounds. Five, forty-six, forty-seven. Got that one. And then we got these guys right here. set all right so now this side is set all we need to do next is get rid of the race on here and then we can put the new spindle back on get everything a good cleaning and then we'll install the new hub and bearing uh, afterwards so you guys can see where I'm cutting the bearing here or the race um, the reason why I cut it in sideways so I can get it a chisel right there. You guys can see that. And all we do is hit it, hit it with a hammer until it cracks, and then this will slide right out. You guys can see there's a crack. And that's all we need. So once there's a crack, this guy just look at that. Just comes right off. Now, there are special uh, bearing pullers for this scenario. But if you're on a budget, just a cutting wheel, a chisel, and a hammer will do a phenomenal job. But the catch is to go pretty deep, not to hit the, not to score the actual um, 
a spindle but just deep enough that the metal is weakened very very much that way when you hit it with a hammer it just cracks the metal just enough and then you can yank it out but that's it repeat the process on your other spindle and then you're give this a good cleaning and then you're ready to install and get your new bearing put back on okay so here's your spindle remember this goes on first now there is a madness to this make sure that the ABS sensor hole is on top then you put your dust cover on just like that and then these four nuts don't require Loctite but they are at 44 foot-pounds so remember that You notice the spindle is grease free and clean of any debris before you install your um, new bearing and hub. So 40 foot, 40 foot foot pounds and kind of a star pattern if you can. Um, this one uses I believe a 16 millimeter. We'll confirm it in just a moment. All right, so now we're down here. This is a, they use a 17 millimeter socket. Uh, so and these are again set at 44 foot pounds. All right, everyone, this is part of the video where I kind of effed up, so I'm going to give you the heads up before we get further into this video. Number one, on your centering plates, once you mount them and you torque them to spec, you're good. But before you put your stub axle onto your centering plates, the top two studs, you need to remove two. Okay, guys, count them. Two um, threads off of each stud on the top. Obviously, you have top and bottom. And the reason for this, the center plate actually has 2.25 degrees of camber. So because of that, the plate actually uh, thins out on its way uh, towards doing the camber. So the studs stick out further because of this. And it's okay. It's actually in the instructions per Fabulous Manufacturing. My fault for not reading them. Uh, it's actually instruction number seven on the paper that they give you in the box. Again, my fault. And I'm trying to correct this right now. So... Remember, the two top studs, you need to remove two threads, no more. Uh, I recommend using a grinding wheel, not a cutoff wheel, because the grinding one will let you repeat and repeat and repeat until you're exactly where you need to be. After you're done cutting the grinding down your, uh, your threads two down, I would recommend tapering them, so that way when you put the nut on, it makes it easy to uh, thread on by hand. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, when you remove your stub axles, and you cut off the races put them immediately in the freezer this is pro tip number two put them in the freezer what's going to happen is that the cold temperature is going to shrink the metal uh, allowing you to put the bearing on there much easier with less effort uh, i recommend leaving the bearings in the sun let them warm up don't get them super hot just get them nice and warm so when you get your stub axle put it on immediately okay and torque them down to spec. Once you do, grab your new bearing hub and ABS ring. It comes as a kit, as you guys can see in the video, and mount it all the way on. Once you do that, you're golden. Put your stub axle nut back on, torque it to specifications, and you're set. Again, my fault in this situation because, again, I got ahead of myself because I did the other brands. Uh, plates and I didn't need to do that in this scenario. We have to so uh, My fault again for going ahead of myself guys. So sorry about that, but Rest of the video enjoy because there's a lot more fun tips on there You guys are gonna learn from these uh, these plates and don't get me wrong Fabulous manufacturing is doing an amazing job on these products. The build quality is amazing So I highly recommend these plates if you guys want to go lower 
You guys want to have a little bit of camber to the rear of your car. And number two, it puts the wheel in the middle. It looks so good. Wait until you guys see it further down the road. You'll see what I mean. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. Peace out. Good. Just... There we go. 44 foot pounds. Done. Now, the next step is putting on your new bearing. Uh, again, make sure this is all clean of debris before you put the new bearing on here. Yeah, the cleaner this is, the smoother it's gonna go on and the less problems you're going to have. So on this car, we are gonna put a premium hub bearing, hub and bearing by Moog. So the cool thing is, everything you need is already on the bearing. So hub, ABS ring, everything ready. Just literally just slide it on to a point. And then what you want to do is tap it in slightly. Do not hit it too hard. That's all we're trying to do. We got to get it past the uh, the front of this. So. Usually they're easy, but sometimes they're not. If it becomes an issue, uh, I'm trying to install them. Um, no biggie. Um, what we're going to do is just remove them and take the spindle off and just use the press, um, which is more than likely what's going to happen. Now, one thing you need to learn about using a press on one of these is that you have to be careful not to press out the uh, race that's inside here. Um, a lot of people will end up doing that and damaging the entire freaking hub. So, um, just remove the hub right now and then uh, we'll go from there. So you guys can see now. They're installed on this side. We're going to do the other side, but we're going to do a special trick on the other side. Um, there's a different process that we got to go about it. And so, um, number one, I failed to read one instruction. <laughs> it was number seven on the paperwork. Um, it does state that you need to grind down uh, one of these two studs, about one to two threads. So I just decided just to grind down both studs, uh, two threads each. Um, these can be left alone. Now, the reason why you got to do that is I just actually noticed this. I don't know if um, Pete, if you're watching this, um, since these plates do have a bit of camber on them, um, the studs tend to protrude out a little bit more. If you guys can see here, see how the stud here is sticking out more than it is down here. And this is why we have to actually uh, grind down these studs a bit more uh, because these will hit the um, the ABS ring on the on your uh, hub so take off about two threads should be just enough it's about a millimeter to two millimeters that you need to grind down once you do that um, taper the um, the uh, the section that you grind it down just taper it a little bit that way the nut goes on a lot easier um, these sides these you don't have to do anything with but these two definitely something you want to do prior to installing your um, your new hub bearing um, or the spindle and the hub bearing uh, we're doing an old school trick where we actually freeze the spindle and the reason why you freeze it uh, whenever you freeze a, 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 a metal it shrinks so we're actually have it right now in the freezer for about 10-15 minutes I'm gonna let it be in there for a little bit longer and freezing it what that allows you to do is that when you pop in the new bearing it actually just slides right on without any issues and that way you can do some uh, test fitments as well so we'll show you guys that in a couple minutes and so this we'll is where it's vital Make sure you get your spindle on, uh, your dust cover. You gotta get this done quick before that spindle warms up. Get the top too. 
nuts. And remember, these are our 44 foot pounds, not 47. 47 is for the um, for the nuts to for it to mount the actual uh, plate here, and then these are to mount your your hub. So. These are all 17 millimeters. Get your socket and your extension. 44 foot pounds, two and two. Just about enough thread to get them on there so they will clear just right. done. So you're going to get your hub and your bearing right here. You see that? No effort whatsoever. Give it a quick spin. Make sure nothing hits. And that's because, again, this went on with no problems because we shrank the spindle. And by shrinking the spindle, this allows us to literally just slide on the bearing uh, with no effort. And then again, just double check your clearance and we are on point. Nothing is hitting, nothing's going to grind or hit. So, perfect. Now, the trick again with Pete from Fabulous Manufacturing, hit me up, I mean I hit him up and uh, all we need to do is grind off the tips off of here one to two threads no more um, that gives you just the amount of tolerance or clearance that you need for the top bolts the bottom two are fine but the top ones since the plate does uh, shrink from the bottom to the top that's the way you're gonna have to solve this issue uh, for the uh, ABS ring hitting the stud that's it quick um, do that very for once you do that make sure your spindle is in the freezer while it's in the freezer do all that, set your stuff up, set both of them, actually if you set both spindles in the freezer, it'll save you a ton of time, and that way, doing what I just did, freezing the spindle, and yeah, it lets you slide the hub bearing on with no effort whatsoever, uh, no need to put a press on or anything like that, and, and look at that, we got it on, all we gotta do is torque this guy down, and we are done, and just finished assembly. Uh, so we'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards once we put it back on. Um, Remember to remove your brake, your handbrake cable. Um, if not, you're not going to be able to actually mount your uh, your caliper on. All right, guys. Big important tip. So, handbrake cable has to be disconnected. So this gives you the length to put your cal uh, your caliper back on the rotor to get it all mounted correctly. So your uh, stub axle nut is at 44 foot pounds, uh, as per uh, torque specifications for the manufacturer. Um, so 44 foot pounds. The bolts that bolt on the uh, drop plate or centering plate, those are at um, 47. The nuts to hold on your uh, stub axle are at uh, 44. And then the actual stub axle nut is actually 44 foot pounds as well. So those are your torque specifications across the board for this, guys. And remember, special secret, put that stub in the freezer. Makes your life a lot better. All right, guys. All right. So the next step in our installation procedure is your handbrake cable. Now the issue is, since we move the caliper essentially um, about an inch back, so the whole entire hub and the entire assembly here actually moves almost an entire inch back. So to f compensate for that, we have to uh, adjust our uh, handbrake cable accordingly uh, because it's not long enough. If we put this back in here, you'll see this is about an inch gap. 
and because of this we can't put the handbrake cable in so we have to fix this issue uh, in doing so we have to actually number one um, adjust the handbrake cable inside the car number two we have to unbolt the not unbolt but un take a take the handbrake cable off the the hangers here and pull the cable further back so we can get it to clip in place correctly um, so this is again this is an issue but the good thing is we are replacing the handbrake cables first before we do this um, he was actually having an issue with the handbrake cables uh, the handbrakes actually not holding correctly because they they probably been used too much so they stretched a lot so we're going to be replacing these cables as well as part of the DIY today so um, the good news is you guys are going to see actually how to remove them so let's get to work so on all mark fours they have this stationary or this one that holds the cable really really tight these are a pain in the ass to remove um, they're a big issue um, so the way to get these off um, is with a flathead screwdriver and literally just prying them off we're probably not going to reuse this anymore um, but there's that and then you're going to make make your way down here and you'll see there's a hook here a hook there and a hook right there um, this one we don't touch this is actually part of the installation um, this is just stays here but the handbrake cable stops right here so this will pop out and all of this will come out with it but before we take it all out we have to adjust them inside the car inside the car so so depending go. on which center console you have on uh, this Jetta he has the the premium center console so it doesn't have the armrest it has the cup uh, the cover here and the cup holder here so we don't we just take these out of the way so we don't damage them and then you'll see when you take the where the armrest is located if you take this cover off there's your handbrake uh, adjustment here so you can go about this two ways um, since the cables are disconnected from the calipers um, you should be able to just pull the cables out of their little mounting spot and I'll show you once I get one out if I can <laughs> I'll show you guys can so you see second. here the cables are hooked on uh, via this little cup here see this cup and they hook onto that around it um, so what you want to do is once you get them off uh, the easiest way to get them off is using a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench um, it's just easier and if you get the if you can get your two fingers on one on the rod and then just break turn it um, if not uh, grab a set of uh, like um, uh, vice grips and just hold that rod while you break it loose because if not you're never going to get it to turn uh, once you do that once you get a couple turns going down um, you'll be able to get those uh, those uh, the little ends off of here and then all we got to do is yank them out of the car. So we ordered the shorter handbrake cable um, for this car uh, because there was actually two options for this specific car. So the shorter one for this one, for this car, works. Uh, I just measured them and they are exactly the same length. Obviously they're not the same style so you guys can see that. Um, but we had to make sure that we got the right one. So. I pulled the cable out so you guys can see it out in person, but it's super easy again. Whoa. <laughs> You'll see here how to mangle this out to get the cable out. It sucks, but um, it's unfortunately what has to get done to get these out. It sucks so much. There's no easy way to get these out. So you do that. Again, over here you pinch this like this. And it gives you the ability to loosen it a bit and then you can pull the cable out like hoop it out and then this guy just chills here it's pretty funny how this thing works it just chills it just holds the cable in place and then again that metal pipe over there just stays in place you just pull the cord out um, once you do that it all fishes right out you repeat the same process on the passenger side 
Um, again, it's super, super easy, not very difficult to do. Um, but now the next step is to uh, feed it back the other way. Now you don't want to do it um, from this like feed it into here first. You want to what you want to do is get the cable mounted in its factory location here first, and then fish it in towards the back. Because if you go back to forward, you're going to fall into the same problem where the cable was too short to fit here. So you're better off going this way and then all the way back in. But before you do that, you need to go inside and make sure that the adjuster on the handbrake cable is all the way out. That way you have the slack you need so this goes on correctly. So after uh, minutes of uh, relentless turning, uh, we finally got the adjuster as far down as possible. Uh, I literally got it to about four or five threads on the actual nut. Um, the, again, this is just sh um, only for us to get the adjustment on here nice. Um, so we don't have to worry as much uh, when we get the cables on. And we have the slack that we need to get it on there proper and not too snug but good and tight you know so we'll show you what to do next so you'll see here I got the cable already up here so the cable literally is just it falls into place because you have all the slack possible in, in the world um, that's good um, so uh, the length here the physical length doesn't change it's just the the cable itself um, but we the reason why we have to start from here work our way back is because when you start fishing things through it's not going to line up or mount in that spot that we were using before nicely um, because again we changed we we made the caliper go further back almost an entire inch so um, things are going to be a little bit tighter than before so I'd rather start from the back and then work our way up versus going from the front and trying to pull the cable as hard as we can to get it in place this way it's already mounted it's here and then we just work our way back mounting everything correctly um, again because of this things are gonna sit a little tighter than before um, but it's, again it's not a big deal so see this cable you're gonna try to fish it into here mount it there and put it over there in the little hole and then everything should just go in where it's supposed to go so you guys can see here I fished the cable finally from here and here to there back in there very very simple I'm gonna grab a zip tie just for a little bit of comfort right here and zip tie this guy just a little snug right here nothing crazy um, just because I don't want it to rattle when he's driving because you'll be able to hear that so we're gonna zip tie give it a little zip tie right here probably between these two little posts just how it was before so it just sits nice and tight against the body and that's it um, but yeah we fished it through so let's get back on top and see where it sits now let's see the cable is all the way back here back there so we'll see if I can get it in there so you guys can see here, we adjusted it as much as we could without causing, again, um, any tension on the brakes. And the way that we say tension or engaging the brakes is that we go over here, and if we can spin it freehand, we're good. One side spins better than the other. I don't know why, but that means we are, brakes are not engaging. That means we're good. Um, so now the next thing I got to do is just put a little, a little zip tie right here. Nothing crazy, just a nice little zip tie just to, again, just to keep it in its spot without vibrating too much. But yeah, so now we're going to show you guys some before and after, uh, pictures of how the car sits since we are now done. So, in this whole entire DIY, we, number one, removed the main hub, 
we put new bearings on, new hubs, uh, brand new Fabulous Manufacturing centering plates. We showed you guys how to remove the handbrake cables, adjust them accordingly for this specific uh, application using the centering plates. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, we showed you guys how to adjust the handbrake cables uh, for this specific application. So, all in all, worked out great. Remember your torque specifications. If you guys don't remember, just rewind back and you'll find them. Um, but yeah, uh, let's check out this uh, after, before and after pictures so you guys can see what I mean, what I'm talking about. How much nicer this car will sit. So you guys can see here where the wheel sits. On here, it's further to the left than it is to the right. So the new drop plates are going to move the wheel to the right in its proper position and then a camber on two degrees and it's actually going to drop it by 20 millimeters so it's going to sit really low so hopefully Ian understands that when he gets his car <laughs> we'll see Indignation is 